Welcome to this video on how to make this stylized grass effect inside of Blender 4.5. The reason we're going to be using 4.5 for this is to take advantage of a new feature coming out, which is the Set Mesh Normal node inside of Geonodes. What this will allow us to do is overwrite the default normals of this grass, which are going to be very noisy when lit, and sort of trick Blender into thinking the grass is doing something different to what it actually is, so we can input a noise texture or some custom painted map to control exactly how we want our shadows to look. So just starting out in a fresh Blender 4.5 scene here, I've downloaded the latest alpha, and bear in mind it's still an alpha, so it's a little bit buggy sometimes, but I found it to be quite stable. So I'm going to drop in a plane to put my grass on, and I'm going to open up a Geometry Nodes editor on the right here, create a new group on this, and like any other grass setup, I'm going to start out with a Distribute Points on Faces node. So let's drop that in here. And I'm going to drop it down below here, and then I'm going to Control shift click to view these points, and I'm going to set the density to something like a 1000, so we really have a dense scatter going on here. And now I just want to instance something on these points, so I'm going to need to make some grass to instance on this. So in the viewport, I'm just going to create a plane and drag that up a little bit here out the way. And then in edit mode, I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees on the Y and scale it down a bit on the Y too, just to make this strip. Then I'm going to move it up on the Z, holding control to snap it. To, so the origin is at the bottom of this. And then I'm going to just give this a few divisions by using Control R to add some loop cuts. Now I'm going to bend this piece of uh, grass and taper it, and I'm going to do that using modifiers. So I'm going to use the Simple Deform modifier. I'm going to taper it first on the Z axes, and I'll play with this factor value until it gets smaller at the top. And then I'll add another Simple Deform to bend this, and I'll bend it in the uh, the y-axis seems to be correct. I'll just make it bend in the other way, like so. Now I'm going to duplicate these around a little bit, make a small clump of grass, and then I'm going to randomize some of the bending parameters and stuff on here to uh, make this look a bit more random, and maybe spread them out a little bit too, just so that we get a nice dense covering of grass when we come to scatter this. So like on some of these, let's reduce the bend amount so they're a bit more upright. Maybe towards the center, they can be a bit more upright. Something like that works pretty well. So I'm going to take all these objects, and the quick way to apply all the modifiers is to press F3 and do Visual Geometry to Mesh. And now all our modifiers are gone on these objects. And I want to join this all to be one object. So I'm going to hit Control J on this. And now we have all these as one individual object. I might just rotate this one a bit so it's facing more outwards. And I'm going to call this our grass. And I'll just put it off to the side for now. Because back in Geonodes, I'm going to drag it in as its own thing in here. And now I'm going to use this as my instance. When I instance on points, I'm going to plug in this grass into the instance object. And obviously the scale is way too large right now, so I'm going to drop down a Transform Geometry node after our grass uh, object, and I'm going to plug in a Value node into the scale, and just set it to something like 0.1 for now. Now I'm going to plug in the rotation into the rotation of the instance on points, just in case we you know, use this on terrain that isn't perfectly flat. And then I'm going to Rotate Rotation to introduce some randomness to the rotation here. Uh, so let's drop in a Rotate a rotate rotation node, like so. Set this to local so they, they spin around their individual centers. And then I'm going to drop down a random value node and set it to vector and plug that into the rotate by. I'll set these all to zero for now so I can find the correct axes to spin these on. Uh, it looks like it's going to be the z axes, so I'll set that to something high so we get randomized. And I'll give it a little bit of random rotation in the other directions too. And if this is a bit too noisy in the viewport for you, a nice tip is to, under your viewport shading, turn off outline, and usually that helps uh, with dense stuff like grass. And then I'll just use one more random value to randomize the scale a little bit too. Just make sure it's a float value and set the minimum to 0.2. Now I'll join this back up with my original geometry. And the first thing I want to talk about is animating this grass to sort of flow in the wind. And that can be done really easily with just another rotate rotation. 
And I'm gonna just use a simple noise texture for now. Set this to 4D, plug the color into the rotate by, and you see we get an invalid blink here. It's because uh, Blender doesn't like us using a color as a rotation. So I'm gonna convert it to a vector by using a vector map scale in between, and now that will work just fine. And now as I play with this W value on the noise, you can see that the grass is sort of flowing a little bit. So I'm gonna plug seconds into this and we get this crazy effect going on now. And I'll set the scale to be much lower so it's a much larger scale effect and maybe some distortion. You could also go ahead and mask this based on a wave texture if you want a more complex setup. So let's go ahead and drop in a wave texture here. Look at seconds instead into the phase offset of this wave texture. And what that will do is if I visualize this on the points and maybe give this a large, a lower scale, it will just make the wave flow like this. So we could multiply the speed if we wanted to, to make it go a bit faster. Um, so let's do something like that and maybe make it uh, on the Z, maybe not the Z. Diagonal should be pretty cool for this actually. Or we could do rings. Uh, Spherical rings, maybe that'd be pretty cool. And make this go in the opposite direction by setting this to minus. And then I'll just use this factor as the scale for the noise texture, and we get this kind of effect, which is pretty cool. Uh, I might just scale down the noise a little bit to reduce the strength of the effect, and maybe drop in some distortion on the wind pattern there. Um, but that's pretty cool for now. Uh, the next step is going to be the fun part where we start to think about how we shape this stuff and do the custom normal transfer. So let's focus on the normal transfer aspect of this first because that's the uh, most important. So right now you can see that, you know, we've basically just taken this piece of grass and placed it all over this plane and the normals reflect that. They're the same as what we input to it. But instead, I want the normals to be different across all of these. So in order to do that, we're going to have to realize instances which will slow things down quite a bit. And um, I wouldn't recommend having too much density for this reason, but uh, you could always drop in a switch with an is viewport node and bypass this part for a smoother animation playback. But for now, I'm just gonna leave that as is. And now we have this rather as instances as real geometry, we can set mesh normal again, Blender 4.5. And you'll notice this node has a few different modes of operation. We have sharpness, free, and tangent space. Sharpness, I, I think it's just sort of like a utility function to remove like creases and that kind of thing. The fun stuff is really when you set it to free and tangent space. And these are very similar. Uh, I would just think of tangent space as being a bit more robust, but slower to compute. So I've been using free because I didn't really see a reason not to, and I've been storing the normals either on points or face corners. I wouldn't recommend faces because they get flat shaded then. So now we can input any vector we like into this custom normal input, and we will reflect that in the viewport. So if I input a vector with a Z up direction, all this grass looks like it's pointing upwards. So if I go into top view, you wouldn't be able to tell that this, you know, is actually any detail in this, um, which is interesting. You could then point it in a direction as well, but it's more uh, interesting to use a texture into this input. So I think like a noise texture, I'll plug that in, untick normalize, and if I play with the scale on this, you can see what we're doing is um, essentially artificially changing the direction the grass is sort of pointing in based on this noise texture. So the shading is changing, um, even though geometry is staying the same. So we can control this more with a vector map add node, and I can add to the Z component to control the sort of strength of this effect. And I think something like that's pretty cool. And that looks really nice. So before we have this very detailed noisy uh, grass surface, and then after we've simplified it a lot by using this uh, set mesh normal node. We are still getting some detail on the back faces of these. So what we're going to want to do is at render time, call the back faces, and um, which we can also do in the viewport here. And that will just avoid us seeing any of these dark patches throughout the grass. So let's set a material on this and start looking at the properties of it. So I'm going to make a new uh, material and use a set material node to apply it in here. And I'm going to make sure I'm in EV. And then on this object, I'm going to turn off under visibility, turn off shadows because we don't want the grass to self shadow in any way because that will create those high detailed areas. Now in our material properties, I'm going to 
go into material preview mode here. I'm going to turn on back face culling for both of these things, camera and shadow, and then I'm going to switch our geometry node space to a shader editor now. And we don't need the principled node, all we're going to need is a diffuse node, a shader to RGB, and we're going to grab a noise texture as well to create some interesting patterns on the graphs. So let's look at the noise texture first. And there's a slight bug in 4.5 at the minute. Every time you uh, control shift click on a node, it will create a new material output. So I've just been dragging stuff into the material output to view it for now. And I'll create something like this at a fairly low scale. And I'll hit control T on this to drop in a texture coordinate node. And I'll switch this to object. I found that gives me slightly better results. And maybe something like that. Just some slight gradients running through this grass. And then I'll put this to a color ramp. And then I'll pick some nice grass colors for this. So maybe a quite saturated green will be good. Maybe a bit darker at this side. One in the middle that's a bit more of a rich green. And then one that's a bit more of a faded or yellowy color. And I'll set the interpolation to V-spline to get some nicer uh, gradients in this. And now I'm going to look at our diffuse shader output here. And you can see this is a fairly standard shading setup. I'm going to use this as a shade to RGB, and this will convert the uh, the shader output into a color so that we can create a nice stylized render for this. So let's use a mix color node now. And I'm going to plug this into the A and this into the factor, actually, I think. And now this V input essentially becomes our shadow color, or I might have it the wrong way around. It might be... Uh, the A is our shadow, so we'll have to see if I drop down a uh, Suzanne to block the light. Yeah, you can see that where her shadow is being cast, and we've got this the wrong way around. So I'm going to plug the color into the B, and then this top input will become our shadow color. And you could see this a bit more clearly if we come out of material preview, go into rendered mode, and drop down a light, a sun lamp here. I have had some bugs with 4.5 where the lights haven't been updating, I've had to toggle in and out of rendered mode, so just in case you encounter that, that would be why. Um, but now I can control this A color to control exactly how my shadows look, so I can give them a nice blue tint. And I could even control the contrast by using a color ramp in between the factor input here. So I could make it more or less shadowy based on this. And everything responds to the light direction properly. But you can see the power of the uh, the set normal node here, because if I turn it off in geometry nodes, we just get this noisy mess, which isn't very usable. And it's always uh, frustrated me to have to use things like the data transfer modifier, which requires you to have a separate mesh which with different geometry. But now we don't have to have any additional geometry. We can just use textures directly in the node tree here. And you don't have to just use a noise texture, you could use something like a Voronoi, you could paint a texture, or you could uh, use maybe a wave texture. But you can see the Voronoi gives some pretty interesting results straight out of the box as well. So yeah, you can definitely have a lot of fun with uh, playing with different inputs into this, uh, into this node. But yeah, that's going to be it for this one. So I hope uh, you learned something about the new set normal node in 4.5 and I'm going to be making a couple more videos probably on different things you'll be able to do with this node. Um, but that's it for now so if you want to grab this file I'll put a link to it in the description. Other than that uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.